This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WBZH Daily News Roundup. For the Buzz of the North, 910 a.m. in Hayward. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Vice President Kamala Harris returns to Wisconsin today. She'll make an appearance with former Congresswoman Liz Cheney in Waukesha County. That's where Republican running mate J.D. Vance campaigned last night. In-person early voting starts in Wisconsin tomorrow. We want people to vote in every single way that they can. We want every vote to count. We want get out there and vote. Vote by mail, vote absentee, vote early, vote on Election Day. Democratic running mate Tim Walz and former President Barack Obama will be in Wisconsin tomorrow. U.S. Senate candidate Eric Hovde wants incumbent Tammy Baldwin to disclose more about her partner's investments and business dealings. They don't disclose those investments and how much they're profiting from it. Maria Brisbane is one of the nation's top wealth advisors. Baldwin says Hovde should stay out of her personal life. And I think I speak for most Wisconsin women that he should stay out of all of our personal lives. The two debated Friday night. The race is tight and the outcome could tip control of the entire U.S. Senate. The Green Bay Packers and the city of Green Bay can't agree on a new lease for Lambeau Field. The issue is who will pay for about a billion and a half dollars worth of repairs and renovations. The city wants the team to pay more while the team wants the city and the stadium district to help. A U.S. Supreme Court ruling last week means the EPA can move forward with new federal carbon pollution standards for power plants. Ashley Radzinski is with the Great Lakes Business Network. She says severe climate events are bad for the U.S. economy. So we need climate action now to ensure that our economy can be planned, can move forward in a way that's good for business, that's good for communities, that's good for our families. Power companies had asked the high court for a pause on work toward tougher standards. Jolly Good Soda is officially the coolest thing made in Wisconsin. The Cryer Foods Soft Drinks Made in Random Lake is the winner of the Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce's annual contest. Jolly Good's been around since 1966 and was rebooted in 2013 as a craft soda brand. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. The Friends of the Lake Walk in Duluth are looking for volunteers to help in their final cleanup event of the season on Monday. Organizers of the event say they're hoping to clean up all eight miles of the lake walk from the canal to Leif Erickson Park on Monday before winter weather starts to move into the region, making the cleanup significantly more difficult. Volunteers will be meeting at the Canal Park Lodge at 2 p.m. regardless of weather, and cleaning supplies will be provided. Volunteers will also be entered into a gift card raffle. As Halloween approaches, a massive jack-o'-lantern has appeared outside a Duluth resort. In honor of the season, the lawn of Pier B now features a pumpkin weighing in at over 1,300 pounds grown by local Jerry Gibson in Sturgeon Lake. Over the weekend, artist Michael Rudolph got to work on turning the giant pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern. It's the third year that Rudolph has carved a giant pumpkin for the resort, and he's hoping it will give passing kids a bit of a fright and a fun memory to get them in the Halloween spirit. An inmate who had escaped from the St. Louis County Jail was taken back into custody on Friday. According to law enforcement authorities, inmate LaRon Brown was being seen for a medical visit at the Fairview Range Medical Center in Hibbing on Thursday when he fled from the guard who accompanied him. He was found on Friday morning after an extensive law enforcement search in the area and was taken back into custody with additional charges expected. He is currently serving a sentence for felony domestic assault. Ballot drop boxes are now available in Superior ahead of the November election. On Friday, Mayor Jim Payne announced the secure ballot drop boxes were officially opened and are available at the Government Center, Superior Fire Department Headquarters, and the Bong Veterans Museum. The drop boxes will be picked up at 6 p.m. on Election Day. In-person early voting will also officially open on Tuesday at the City Clerk's Office. Residents will be able to stop in from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on weekdays until November 1st to vote early. The Barron County Sheriff's Department is looking for information from the community following a high-speed motorcycle chase over the weekend. According to Sheriff's Department officials, the chase occurred early Sunday evening when a deputy attempted to conduct a traffic stop of the driver of the motorcycle. The cyclist then sped off, leading police on a chase around the area, which they later called off due to safety concerns. Law enforcement authorities are asking anyone with information about the cyclist to contact them. 
A number of Rice Lake businesses were destroyed following the sizable fire in the downtown area on Thursday. According to the Rice Lake Fire Department, the building fire at East 17 Messenger Street destroyed the kitchen and floor decor warehouse, Finewood Inc., Cheese Louise, and Agonic Brewing. Crews responded to the fire at around 3.40 p.m. on Thursday, and due to high winds, downed power lines, and a broken natural gas line, it took them about three hours to get the fire under control. The cause is under investigation. A new report from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found that Wisconsin is lagging behind in getting children vaccinated. According to a press release from the Department of Health Services, Wisconsin kindergartners are behind on vaccines for diseases like polio, pertussis, and DTaP. The report also shows Wisconsin kids are vaccinated for MMR at a rate of about 85 percent, below the national rate of about 93 percent. Health officials are reminding parents to get their kids vaccinated to protect them and their communities. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources is considering changes to their deer management boundaries amid dropping deer harvest rates. According to the DNR, last year's deer harvest dropped 30 percent in the northern counties, leading officials to consider setting boundaries based on habitat instead of county lines. Officials are in the process of determining how much support they can get for revising the deer harvest boundaries and could present their final recommendation to the Natural Resources Board in just a few months. And that's what you need to know. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. The Packers win a thriller. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Packers with a 24-22 win over the Houston Texans Sunday, thanks to a 45-yard field goal by their new kicker, 33-year-old Brandon McManus. It's exciting. Uh, yeah, what, a, what a week. Great group of guys. I'm the oldest on the team by two years, so you know, some of them are, are trying to call me uncle and, and dad already. But no, I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, what a way to help this team win my first game here at Lambeau Field. Packers head coach Matt LaFleur. He's a vet. You can see it. The moment's not too big for him, and obviously that was a big Time kick. Green Bay improves to 5-2. and two. Next, they'll play the Jaguars in Jacksonville. College football, the Badgers able to strip sack Wildcats quarterback Jake Lausch on the way to a 23-3 win at Northwestern. Luke Fickle on his team able to convert turnovers into points. That's the key element to what we're starting to see from, from this group is we're able to take advantage of some of these opportunities that are presented to us. The Badgers host Penn State on Saturday with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Sure, Mel Gibson has his quirks and comes across as a bit crazy at times. Many people seem to have written him off, but not actor Andrew Garfield, who says everyone deserves a second chance. The Spider-Man actor told People magazine Gibson has done a lot of soul-searching and beautiful healing within himself. Many think the actor hurt his career in Hollywood since a DUI in 2006, during which he made anti-Semitic remarks. He directed Garfield in Hacksaw Ridge as recently as 2016, so it's not like he's completely unemployed. Speaking of Spider-Man, Tom Tom Holland teased a script for Spider-Man 4 and says it's coming along nicely. He and girlfriend co-star Zendaya have both read early drafts and are very excited about the project, which is still a long way from being in theaters. So people will have to try even harder to remember Holland's Peter Parker after the previous film's ending. Inside joke. And this makes a ton of sense news. Variety reports that Al Pacino says he took roles in movies that he didn't even understand because he was flat broke. Pacino says one minute he had $50 million and the next minute he had nothing, thanks to his accountant who stole from him and ended up spending seven and a half years in jail. Pacino went back to work, but not for the money he made when he was younger. This makes a lot of sense, as the actor did a lot of not-so-memorable films post-2010. His new memoir, Sunny Boy, is available for purchase this week. If you like musicals, you'll love this. Hugh Jackman and Kate Hudson are set to play a couple who is part of a Neil Diamond tribute band. Variety reports Song Sung Blue is in the early stages of production. The cast also includes Fisher Stevens, Jim Belushi, and Michael Imperioli. The show is based on a real-life couple who are struggling musicians and formed said tribute band in 2008, calling it Lightning and Thunder. Who else thinks this sounds like an absolute blast? The Apprentice, starring Sebastian Stan, has caused some controversy and generated the ire of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump. Trump and his team tried to prevent the film from coming out altogether. Stan says that's hypocritical as the candidate has been touting free speech. The Apprentice follows Trump in the early days of his business ventures. The film received good reviews and is currently in theaters. Remember when we used to order DVDs from Netflix through the mail and there were times the company was struggling to survive? Those days are long gone. Netflix added 5 million users in the third quarter of this year alone. The company is projecting its earnings to be $43 billion in 2025. That's a growth of 11 to 13 percent, according to Variety, and about $5 million bucks more than last year. The streaming platform now has 282 million users. This must mean lower prices for subscribers, right? Hello? Is this mic on? For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Waba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. 
It's going to be another nice one today. Partly cloudy, high in the upper 70s this afternoon. Tonight, partly cloudy into the low 50s. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, becoming breezy. A shower in the afternoon and cooler with a high in the low 70s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Current temperature 44. That's your WBZH Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at buzzofthenorth.com. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about.